Today, I'll show you how to use relations in attributes in QGIS using both value maps and values relation. Let's see how we can do this. Open an instance of QGIS and add a base map. The first thing we are doing here is to create a new layer. We will create temporary ones as the process is uh, the same for all type of information let's call it stations maybe maybe we want to map point stations um, with sensors about um, the weather the temperature and so on so the first thing to do is to add some fields add an integer id a uh, type we want to know the type of the station it's a string but it could also be an um, an integer hmm, let's put it as an integer type it's better as we are gonna doing relationship here uh, type let's call it the name of the station the code let's call it code this is better the name code also text let's add another field which is operator this time is an integer as we want to build a relation here add the fields click ok once we have set up the station layer double click on the the layer itself and open up the attributes form here you can customize the aspect of the various fields if you take the id if you take the id you can change its alias which is actually a label and let's call it identifier for instance and you can also change the widget type and you can set some constraints so it's not null it's not uh, it's unique and it's really useful to do that for a uh, identifier for an id uh, for example the minimum is zero the maximum is uh, the limit of the field so now we can put an uh, ID which is from 1 to uh, let me so above 2 billions 32 bits so if we now open the attribute table you will see here the alias instead of the name of the field and let's go back to the attribute form and click type type let's put in the uppercase alias here it's editable this control allows us to change the widget type scroll down and select value map okay now here we can load data from layer or from csv file or you can put it here as the first thing we add a null value so we want this is nullable so we want an empty value the first the uh, next let's put one as the value and the description may be temperature temperature two and uh, wind free um, humidity and so on so if we now click apply and okay let's keep the other uh, as they are I click okay add the new let's add a new point maybe we want to add it here the identifier is one and here you will see the type now is not an edit text anymore it's a select and you can set null but also temperature wind and humidity if you click temperature and you click ok you will see the point 
added here. This allows us to have a drop down also here in the attribute table and it's uh, easier for us to put data in the right way. Let's move on to the code. The code is, um, let's add an alias for this. It's editable, the text, it's an edit text. Maybe it's multi-line or HTML, we don't care actually, but we want to, to this to be unique. So maybe add the code, alert station one. And then the operator is still empty and we want it empty as well. Let's add a few more. This is 95 2. As you can see here, it's not, uh, it constraints are not null and unique. So we have to put it as 2. The type here is wind. The code will be station 2. And let's add another one with, with humidity. The value will be hit 3. A session free okay with this free we can already set a classification for the symbology as the symbology so is categorized and we can classify based on a field okay oh, sorry for the type, so classify for type, all other values, okay. Let's change the color for other values, which is the null one, so, okay. And let's customize a bit, so this is yellow, more, more yellow. <clears throat> the wind is, uh, mm, will be okay, like this. Click apply, and you will see that we have three different colors one for the station of temperature, one for the wind, one for humidity. Okay, and this is actually very good. You can also add a label with the, the code. Uh, let's add mask. Oh, maybe a bit more of color and size of the mask. bit more than that mm, text oh it's let's put it lighter so okay now it works okay the next step is to work with the fourth value here operator but we don't want to have it populated by the value map, but using the value relation. To do that, you need to add a new layer, create a new one, uh, let's call it Ops Operators, and the geometry type will be no geometry. The, again, let's add a few fields, an ID and a name. Hmm. Maybe we want more than 10, but for the moment it's okay. So open the attribute table for the ops and add a few data. Let's put ID one. Let's put my name here and add another one. And maybe let's call it uh, John or another one, three, and Jane it's okay as the name let's save this can now we have a table with IDs and names and let's link it to operation to the stations the operator field here so alias it will be operator with the editable widget type has to be value relation let's select select the oops layer and the key column will be id which is actually the value that gets populated in the operator field 
here in the stations layer and the, as the value we use the name so it's actually the uh, value shown on the attribute table let's al allow a null value as um, technically you can have an station without an operation operator so this is already okay uh, click click apply or okay and uh, let's open the attribute table again now in operation operator we will have the drop down with the values in the ops layer so actually we have created a wonderful relation between stations and ops so this is an tool which is really powerful to uh, customize the data view of the mm, features loaded in your QGIS project. So for the moment, it's everything. If you have a question, add a comment. Don't forget to click the like button and to subscribe and never miss an update. Thank you for listening and see you to the next episode.